Second. Second. Mr. Stone? Yes. Mr. Earth? Yes. Mr. Babbage? Yes. I'd like to ask everybody rise, please. Pledge of Allegiance. Join us. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Motion to adopt the agenda with modifications. Second. Mr. Stone? Yes. Mr. Girth? Yes. Mr. Pat? Yes. <sighs> Presentations and recognitions. Dr. Fagan. Wherever you want. So, um, so I'm Dr. Steve Fagan. So I'm the Vice President of Medical Affairs and Chief Doctor of your hospital, Mercy Anderson. And on behalf of the Mercy Health uh, employees and, and everyone here, it's a great privilege to just kind of give you a briefing on uh, what's going on with your hospital, which opens up in about a week or so. And so of the about 11,000 jobs in Anderson Township, about 1,500 are with Mercy Health. And we represent a pretty significant part of the township. And so um, we have expanded, and we will be coming to the end of that uh, uh, big construction project, a two-year project, here next Friday. October of 2014, you guys were all with us when we broke ground in a big tent. And the ribbon cutting next Friday will be very similar to that. And so you are invited. I hope you'll be there. Um, we'll start it off with cutting the ribbon. And you guys were coming, too, on Friday, September 23rd at noon. Um, the Turpin High School Band will be playing um, as you arrive from 12 to 1230. The Anderson High School a cappella Choir uh, will sing the national anthem as uh, American Legion Post 318 presents the colors and McNicholas Liturgical Choir will sing uh, the song called The Circle of Mercy, which is actually written by Sister of Mercy, and they're doing a special presentation of that. And you'll hear a few speeches, including one of your own, Mr. Girth. Uh, very few speeches, and they're short. Short. Um, short. And then we'll have short. lunch, and we'll see the tower. And so that'll be the first opportunity that um, you folks and several others will have the opportunity to see the five-story tower that uh, is the expansion, Tower C. Tower A uh, opened in 1984, Tower B opened in 1989 when we finally closed uh, Mercy Marymount and Tower C, which is one of the most technologically advanced um, health care facilities in the city, um, will open uh, next week. On Saturday, the very first event, the very first community event in this new tower is with our partner, the Forest Hills District. So the Forest Hills Foundation for, Ex uh, for Education will be hosting the uh, Soiree for Success um, on Saturday. We hope you'll come. Uh, I'm sure uh, that one of your members will have invitations if you don't have one. But uh, that is the first event on 7 p.m. On, on Saturday, which is just kind of shows our partnership. Among the dignitaries who are cutting the ribbon on Friday, Five of them will be uh, students from Nagel Middle School, the design winners of the Atrium Design Project. That's the fourth year that we've done a design project with Nagel Middle School. They designed the parking lot, they designed the um, atrium, designed the ICU waiting area, designed the um, um, uh, cafeteria, and now the atrium. And so one of the things you'll see is you'll see some posters of what Nagel design students thought this atrium should look like. Uh, based on what our criteria were and things like that. On Sunday uh, is a big event, which is a community open house from 1 to 4 p.m. There'll be some snacks, there'll be some tours, um, and a special event for EMS and first responders, which occurs at noon uh, prior to the community event from noon to 1. You guys are welcome to, to come and, and join us for that. We'll have lunches. We have the obligatory box lunches, so those can find their ways back to the squad houses. Um, as we always do with EMS, uh, but then the community is invited to uh, also see the tower on uh, Sunday. We will be dedicating the Chapel of Mercy, and so a big part of the hospital is, in fact, its heritage, and so it's all brand new with all the technological stuff and all private rooms, but it also recognizes a lot of heritage. So it's a healing garden and a new chapel, and so on Thursday, um, September 29th, Archbishop Schnur uh, will be here to uh, dedicate the chapel, and it's a dedication that is the same thing that you would open a new church. And then we'll also dedicate something called the Healing Garden uh, with a rill and a number of things um, that are very similar to the original Macaulay House in Dublin uh, later that morning. And then the following day, um, 30th, the last day before we start actually doing things with this tower, we'll have uh, a, a number of, um, of EMS drills. Uh, environmental drills, um, active shooter drills, and things like that. It's the only time we'll ever have an actual hospital that's empty um, 
that we can do these unfortunate but necessary drills, including evacuation drills. And in the first two weeks, uh, we moved patients in a very methodical way until about mid-October, we have moved into that new tower. And so by the end of October, your hospital will have all private rooms. Uh, you will not have to share a room with a, with a roommate ever again in Anderson Township. And so we invite you to join uh, some or all of uh, those events with us. And, um, and we hope you don't need us, uh, but uh, please know that the technical advantage, the, the, the significant increase in the medical capability in this township over the last five years is astounding. And so your hospital is a real medical center. Uh, there's very little that we can't do right here locally. And so thank you for the opportunity to sort of brief the trustees and administrators on the, on the new hospital. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Sagan. times. You're going to be busy for the next few weeks, aren't you? He's always busy. Yeah, thank you also for all the community involvement that you personally are involved with. Appreciate it. Make sure Josh keeps the speech nice and short. Oh, don't worry. Now we'll move to the public forum. Individuals who wish to address the board should make uh, non-repetitive points as clearly and concisely as possible, limiting their comments to a maximum of five minutes. Speakers are asked to state their name and address simply for the record. If anyone would like to speak and come forward and address the board, please do so. Okay, I don't think anyone's rushing up here to make comments to us, but that's okay. So with that, we'll close the public forum section of the meeting, move on to trustee comments. Dee? Yeah, I would just want to follow up with Dr. Fagan said, and Josh, uh, Mercy has been a wonderful community partner to the entire township and to the Forest Hill School District and the Forest Hills Foundation for Education. And I had the pleasure of being at the, uh, when the Nagel students presented their designs, I was there when they presented, and it was, uh, amazing what these kids came up with so it is that they've provided so many authentic learning opportunities for our students so that uh, partnership is really working well for all of us so and I think that's it for me go Bearcats yeah. I'm good. Uh, I don't have anything today but it is exciting times so thank you fiscal officer Ken Dietz thank you we have the uh, financial reports uh, as of the end of August as I say, every uh, month uh, in the beginning of the year, the real estate collections have uh, gone into our uh, revenues twice, and that's the uh, bulk of our revenues. So our revenues are way ahead of uh, what we projected for the total year. They're actually about 85, 90% in, but we won't be getting a whole lot of money other than those real estate revenues that we already have. So, And then the expenditures are lagging behind what we had uh, anticipated. However, we have a couple uh, purchase orders and projects that uh, are going to come up at the end of the year. So that will probably catch up. Hopefully, we'll still wind up being 5 to 10 percent under budget or expenditures. Excellent. Thanks, Ken. You got some appropriation changes? No appropriation changes. Excellent. Law Director Margaret. Good afternoon. Hi, Margaret. In your packet, you will see that there is a resolution for your consideration accepting and approving the annual information filing of the township and directing that it be filed with the MSRB, uh, which is the Municipal Securities Rulemaking Board, for continuing disclosure purposes. When the township issued bonds in 2007 and then refunded those bonds in 2014 to generate savings to the township. Um, one of the requirements at the time of issuance of those bonds was uh, that the township would make an annual filing with the Municipal Securities Rulemaking Board, which is updates the information that was disclosed to investors who bought your bonds at the time they were issued. And of course, once they're issued, then they're traded in the open market. So. The purpose of this statement that all issuers have to um, file online is to make more current financial information regarding the township available to those persons who are buying and trading your bonds. So um, the resolution asks that uh, or authorizes Vicki and Ken, Ken is the fiscal officer, to uh, review, complete, and file this statement um, online. So I'm working with both Ken and Vicki to complete that. 
and answer any questions you may have. No. Any questions? I move to adopt a resolution accepting and approving the annual information filing of the township and directing its filing with the MSRB for continuing disclosure purposes. Second. Mr. Stone? Yes. Mr. Gerth? Yes. Mr. Pappas? Yes. Then I just had uh, one update for you in connection with the two le uh, issues that will be on the ballot. We've been notified by the Board of Elections that the ballot proofs are available for review and again Ken and Vicki and I are looking at those. Um, so the safety services levy and the aggregation issue, the text for the ballot um, is currently under review. Thank you. I and we have, mean, do we have been under review for purposes of pulling it. They just give you an opportunity to review the text on the ballot proof and that's what we're doing. We'll sign off on that. Okay. Do we have issue numbers? Yeah. Um, we, we do. The, um, the levy is issue number 30. I can't imagine that these will change from the ballot proof, um, but that is issue number 30 and I don't have the aggregation. The aggregation, yes. at least on the proof, follows consecutively. 31. Okay. Yeah. And we did run the aggregation language by Energy Alliances to uh, make sure that they were comfortable with it and they did uh, sign off on that language. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Margaret. Planning and zoning, Paul. Good afternoon. The first item on our agenda is Nordyke Estate Subdivision. Um, the Anderson Township sidewalk policy requires, and the Hamilton County Subdivision regulations require sidewalks on both sides of, of township streets for new subdivisions and along all street frontages for new subdivisions. So Nordyke Estate Subdivision is a five lot subdivision proposed off of Nodding Wood Drive near Nordyke Road. And in lieu of building sidewalks on both sides of the new street, which again is just a small street to access the five lots, the um, developer, Dries Homes, and the township have discussed an alternative sidewalk arrangement that would allow for a sidewalk on one side of the new street. And then in lieu of building the sidewalk on the opposite side, to extend an existing sidewalk on the east side of Nordyke south to Kazo. And this is approximately the same distance. And it would connect the homes on Kazo um, all the way up to Beachmont Avenue. This is a, it's a continuation of that sidewalk on Nordyke south, um, but it, it would allow for that connection. So again, the developer is in agreement, but it does require trustees approval to make that alternative agreement. I would move to modify the sidewalk requirements as outlined in staff's memorandum dated September 8th, 2016 for the Nordyke Estate Subdivision to allow for off-site sidewalk construction on the east side of Nordyke Road from Kazo Drive north to an existing sidewalk as outlined by staff and consistent with the Anderson Township sidewalk plan with funding provided by Drees Homes and tax increment financing. Second. Mr. Stone? Yes. Mr. Gerth? Yes. Mr. Pappas? Yes. Thank you. We have two items under um, B for nuisance abatement consideration. The first property, and both of these are for tall grass. The third item on Finnegan has been resolved. But the first I, uh, property is at 1020 Azure Court. The listed property owner is Judith Ann McCoy. Um, and again, this would be for the abatement of tall grass. I move to adopt a resolution determining existence of nuisance on land owned by Judith A. Ann McCoy located at 1020 Azure Court in Anderson Township and providing for new new notice and remediation pursuant to Ohio Revised Code Section 505.87. Second. Mrs. Stone? Yes. Mr. Gerth? Yes. Mr. Pappas? Yes. And the second property is located at 1660 Laval Drive. The property owners are Michael and Kelly Palazzolo. And again, this is also for the abatement of tall grass. I move to adopt a resolution determining existence of a nuisance on land owned by Michael A. and Kelly J. Palazzolo. Palazzolo. Palazzo, Palazzo All right. Located at 1660 Laval Drive in Anderson Township and providing for notice and remediation pursuant to Ohio Revised Code Section 505.87. Second. Mrs. Stone? Yes. Mr. Gerth? Yes. Mr. Pappas? Yes. The third property, which was located at 2178 Finnegan, uh, with the help of a neighbor, we were able to get a contact phone number, and that property has been mowed. Uh, so we will. So those are all three grass. Those are all three grass. So we will happily remove that from the agenda. 
or well, at least not request action on it. So, thank you. Thanks, Thanks Paul. Ah, oh, jeez. Grass, grass, grass. Sheriff's Department, Lieutenant Matt Guy. Is that portion of the meeting where we take care of the thirsty township residents? <laughs> Um, you'll see um, in your packet, you should have on the agenda, a uh, request for, um, let's see, there's two transfers and one new liquor permit request. Um, the first one I have is the Anderson Pub and Grill, LLC, um, 8060 Beachmont Avenue. Um, that is a transfer and we have no objections to that. A motion? I move to uh, not to object to a liquor license transfer Request for Anderson Pub and Grill, LLC, located at 8060 Beachmont Avenue in Patio. Second. Mr. Stone? Yes. Mr. Girth? Yes. Mr. Pappas? Yes. Uh, the second I have is a liquor license. It's a new request. Um, it is U-A-O-H-I-L-L-C, doing business as Uptown Art. That's located at 7713 Beachmont Avenue. And again, no objections. I move not to object to a new liquor license request for UA. OH1 LLC doing business as Uptown Art located at 7713 Beachmont Avenue. Second. Mr. Stone? Yes. Mr. Earth? Yes. Mr. Travis? Yes. And the last item is a liquor um, license request transfer. Um, DNK Gillum LLC BBA Lounge 7740 Beachmont Avenue. We have no objections to this location. I move not to object to a liquor license transfer request for D and K Gilman LLC DBA Lounge located at 7740 Beachmont Avenue. Love the lounge. Second. <laughs> Mr. Stone? Yes. Mr. Earth? Yes. Mr. Pappas? Yes. Where is that? Oh yeah. <laughs> we'll follow you. We'll follow you there. <laughs> <laughs> and that's all I have. <clears throat> I'm dodged a bullet on that one, right? Mm-hmm. Um, Public Works, Richard Shelley. I have three items before the board today uh, and one announcement. If we, Okay, we did modify. Okay. Um, real quick, the, uh, it is lighting district season. We are at that time of the year where we must renew our lighting districts. Uh, for the residents who live within those districts, this is their opportunity to uh, pay their fair share to operate and maintain the lights that exist within their subdivisions. So what you have before you is three renewals. These are all three renewals, no new here. Uh, you have Eagles View Lighting District, uh, Stony Bridge, and lastly then Washington Hills South. I would move to adopt a resolution awarding contract and confirming assessments for Eagles View Lighting District pursuant to revised code sections 9.30, 515.081, 515.11, 5 and 515.08. Second. Mr. Stone? Yes. Mr. Earth? Yes. Mr. Pappas? Yes. Do I have another? That second one? Yeah. I move to award contract and confirming assessments for Stone Bridge or Stony Bridge Lighting District pursuant to revised code sections 9.30, 515.081, 515.08, 515.11, and 515.08. Second. Mr. Stone? Yes. Mr. Girth? Yes. Mr. Pappas? Yes. And I move to adopt a resolution awarding contract and confirming assessments for Washington Hills South Lighting District pursuant to revised code sections 9.30, 515.081, 515.11, and 515.08. Second. Mr. Stone? Yes. Mr. Girth? Yes. Mr. Pappas? Yes. What else? That's all I have. And for the record, on that one of the whereas clauses, the uh, modified amount for the bidding requirement was changed to $50,000 years ago. Every one of the resolutions you have, say 25, it's an old carryover, but we'll make sure that gets corrected in the new um, record and it'll all be duly noted. But just so you know, uh, that, that number was modified to $50,000 years ago. So we, we just caught that and we'll take care of that in the final record. Uh, the last announcement I have is, as the board is aware on an annual basis, the Hamilton County Road Superintendents have a kickoff to the snow se season year with a training session called the uh, Snowplow Rodeo. And 60 drivers from across the county and uh, many townships participate. 60 drivers usually show up and they go through an obstacle course. They push a barrel back into a dock, go through some cones and try not to hit mailboxes. 
it, it's part of a fun exercise and it's a way that we kick off the season. Well, we had uh, four drivers that participated yesterday. One of our very own, Harley Crewe, placed third in that event, so I'd like to acknowledge uh, the, his efforts there. And this year we added a backhoe uh, component, which we namely dubbed the backhodeo. And under the backhodeo, <laughs> one of our uh, local guys, uh, one of our road, to, uh, road workers, Mr. Jamie Bender, placed third in the back hodeo contest. So we had a top three in the driver and a top three in the operator, and we're saluting those two gentlemen today and, of course, all the efforts uh, that the uh, road maintenance guys do on an annual and yearly basis for us. Congratulations. Thank you. And they, and they do try to miss mailboxes, is that We do correct? try to miss them. I want Harley on my street. Well, the... Uh, the, the interesting thing is, when you do hit them, you know it. <laughs> Have a good night. Thanks, Richard. Was that the back hodeo? Mm -hmm. Back hodeo. Back hodeo. Quite clever. As always, a tough act to follow. I, I don't know how you're going to top the back hodeo, but Mark yes. Ober, Fire and Rescue. I just have the announcement uh, for this year's Fire Prevention Week is uh, October 9th through the 15th. And we will be providing our annual safety fair open house at Station 6, which is uh, the Operations Center on Beachmont Avenue. On uh, Saturday, October 8th from 12 to 5, uh, we will have lots of displays there, uh, things for the all ages to uh, learn a little bit more about uh, life safety and fire safety events. And this year, one of the themes that we're passing on to everybody is don't wait, check the date. Uh, there is data and information out that you should be replacing your smoke, uh, heat, and uh, CO detectors every 10 years. So we're just passing that word on and uh, hopefully get everybody to take a look at theirs and uh, make sure they're in working order. So I am. Very good. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank Thanks you. for the reminder. Township Administrator Vicki Earhart. And Mr. Severs has the first several items. Good afternoon. I'll warm up this mic. Actually, Steve did earlier. So. Um, I have uh, two items for the board's consideration. One is first the street name change for a portion of Bowen Avenue. This is the portion of Bowen that runs west from Wolfangle Road to the current intersection with what was Town Center Way. Um, the request before the board is to consider a resolution to request the county engineer's office and ultimately county commissioners to rename that as Town Center Way so that Town Center Way would be one continuous roadway from Five Mile Road to Wolf Angle Road. That's consistent with the plans that we've been preparing to date and would allow us to coordinate that when completion of that work is done later this year. Motion. I move to adopt a resolution requesting that the Board of County Commissioners of Hamilton County, Ohio, rename a portion of Bowen Street as Town Center Way in Anderson Township and undertake the necessary proceedings to effect the name change. Second. Mr. Stone? Yes. Mr. Gerth? Yes. Mr. Pappas? Yes. Great. Thank you. Uh, second I, I have is actually there's two parts of this. These are for authorization to proceed with Ohio Public Works Commission applications for State Capital Improvement Program loan funds. Uh, the first is for improvements to the sanctuary of Ivy Hill subdivision, which would include all the roadways in that subdivision with the exception of the first 700 feet, which has already been approved coming off a little dry run. So uh, there's a request and resolution before you for that, which would allow us to apply for that program the deadline is tomorrow. So I move to adopt a resolution authorizing grant application for improvements to roadways in the sanctuary of Ivy Hill subdivision. Second. Mrs. Stone? Yes. Mr. Gerth? Yes. Mr. Pappas? Yes. Thank you. And the second one I probably should have done first in light of number or letter A. Uh, this proceeds uh, re relation to Town Center Way, and the request is to proceed with application for loan funding for the improvements of Town Center Way. This would be from the rear of the Anderson Town Center, near where the current improvements will terminate, uh, heading north and west to Five Mile Road. Uh, again, this is a loan application for State Capital Improvement Program funds. I move to adopt a resolution authorizing grant application for Town Center Way improvements. Second. Mr. Stone? Yes. Mr. Gerth? Yes. Mr. Pappas? Yes. Thank you. The next item that's on your agenda, the Energy Special Improvement District, we're going to bring that back to the board at the October interim workshop meeting. We have a, a meeting tomorrow to clarify a couple of points, so we, we hope to bring that back to you uh, for action at the interim. 
The last item we have on the agenda is regarding Turpin Hills parking. Uh, during the past interim workshop meeting, I presented the board with a petition that had been submitted by residents of Stirrup Road and Bentley Court requesting additional parking restrictions. There is a motion before you that would authorize those restrictions. I would move to amend Exhibit A of Resolution 4-0520-07, regulating parking on all township streets with exceptions where consideration of public welfare permit by the addition of the following language. No parking shall be permitted on either side of Stirrup Road from Caledon Lane to Newtown Road and on either side of Bentley Court between 7 a.m. and 9 a.m. school days. Second. Mrs. Stone? Yes. Mr. Girth? Yes. Mr. Pappas? Yes. Thank you. That's all we have today. Thanks, Vicki. Uh, well, thank you for coming. I'd like to remind everybody our next regular board meeting be October 20th, 2016 at 6 p.m. Citizens should feel free to call 688-8400 to confirm. Do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Ms. Stone? Yes. Mr. Girth? Yes. Mr. Yes. Thank you for coming.